My heart's desire is that we would congregate around the worship of God. Give us that song and let's congregate around the worship of the, of the head of the church. Greater than the glory of the former. Even at this time of the latter rain, it is our prayer ah. that you would send rain. Yes. Restore the glory of your house. Palama Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even this morning, we honor you. We want to declare that you are the head of the church. Thank you, Jesus. That only you deserve our honor, our praise. Thank you. Our adoration. Even this morning, Runehelayona, receive it, Lord Jesus. Moyasi, receive it. Son of the Most High God. Even as we gather this morning in your name, we just want to honor you, Lord, for taking the form of man. 
Lenzula Haulari, you do not consider it robbery to be equal to God. But you put it off, you put off your rightful cloth of being God and came to form part of man. Even this morning, we just want to honor you and bless you for it. Reale Buhamrena, for you are rich towards us. And so we bless you even this morning as we welcome you, as we acknowledge your presence among us. Do what you are here to do. Have your way among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Can we give them a round of applause? Amen. Amen. Uh, I bless the Lord. Uh, um, I, I, I'm a bit undone, so just give me a second. Uh, um, they, we must prize the presence of God. We have to prize, we have to value the presence of God. Part of the challenge we have today is that during the week, people don't prize the intimacy with God. And then on Sunday, they want to be pumped up. Um, but, but if you and I spend time in the presence of God as a way of life, as a culture, as what we do. When we gather together on Sundays, our services will explode. Because all of us will be coming and we will minister to each other out of our fullness. Amen. Amen. The problem is that sometimes we gather and we are not fooled. And you want someone else to fill you up. You must fill yourself up in the presence of the Lord on Monday and Tuesday. And Wednesday and Thursday, it's your responsibility and mine. To go into the presence of the Lord. You see, Bazalana, uh, I love this theme that you, that you have. The Damascus encounter. But if you look at the sub-theme, confrontation, challenge, and change. But I want you to understand, I want us to understand. For this is a co-laboring work. God challenges us. God confronts us. But how we respond to the challenge and the confrontation of God depends on us. You see, God does, you see, God does not change us. He doesn't twist our hand so that we might change. We have to invite him. The sanctification work of the Holy Spirit is, is about reorientating our heart towards obedience. But that work requires yours and my own discipline. We have to spend time in the word. We have to spend time in prayer. And we have to obey the word of God. We have to obey the word of God. That's how God changes us. You see, we have our theology is sometimes incorrect, and you see it in how we pray. You hear us say, Remember those who are in hospitals and in prisons. 
Who sends who? Mudimu orona it's a job. Marona har rapela. Mudimu ba hopole. God says, "Kema sebe tu arona yet." When we pray, God remember them. Who is whose responsibility is it? Na kibi karabelo ba ma. It's the responsibility of the church. Kibi karabelo ba kare. This co-laboring work with God is an important thing to understand. So when God confronts us, when God challenges us with his way, let us not respond like this uh, expert of the law. Uh, this particular one, the Bible says, when confronted by the truth, the Bible says of him, he then, wanting to justify himself, then said, who is my neighbor? Er, he wanting to justify himself. Confronted Faced by the truth of God. He, yeah. wanting to justify himself, says, who is my neighbor? Let us not respond like that to the confrontation and the challenge of the word. I often say, uh, when, I, when I start to, to minister like I am this morning, Jesus is still coming I would say, for a church that is without sport, without blemish, any, any such thing. The challenge, however, is how you and I respond to even that statement. The, res the appropriate response of the bride of Christ. Christ says do it in my life Lord produce such a people out of me that's the only appropriate response because he is clear he is coming for such a church your only choice and mine is whether we will form part of that church or not. So my response and yours should always be do that in me. Produce such a church in me. We must mourn when we look at our own state and looking at what Jesus wants to accomplish in us. But not mourning that leads to condemnation and shame. But the kind of mourning that positions us correctly with him. The kind of mourning that invites his presence to sanctify us, to wash us, to have his way dwell in us richly so that it might produce out of you and me this glorious church that he says he will present it to himself. Ephesians 5.27. He says he will present it to himself. I apologize, just write it. We're not, we're not there. Um, so that's not how I plan to introduce. I plan to, uh, to appreciate the invitation, Moruti. Uh, uh, it's it's a privilege for for me to have been invited to you know to come and share the, from the word of the Lord with you this morning. Um, I honor you know 
the angel of the house, Muruti uh, Luhoko, the leadership of the church. I, I, I know Muruti through uh, Pastor JK. Um, he and I uh, were in we university together many years ago. Um, and uh, it's, it's been an honor. Uh, to to know him and to know the family. And so thank you, Muruti, for, you know, and the leadership for considering it uh, uh, useful for me to come and share from the word of God with you this morning. Um, okay. I'm not sure how much time left I have. Let's see. Um, so I've been asked to, you know, to add a couple of thoughts to this theme, the Damascus Encounter. I believe uh, that Demutlong, you know, laid the groundwork last week and, uh, and that this tolle will continue next week. And I hope that there are some thoughts that I will add to, uh, to this theme that will help us in our walk with the Lord. Amen. Yeah, so, so uh, Damascus encounters are often uh, dramatic, life-changing encounters with God. Yeah, they are dramatic. They, they, they don't always have to be painful, but uh, the, you, can, you can't miss them, right? Yeah, so these are supernatural encounters with God. Bazalona, supernatural encounters with God must be commonplace among believers. They don't always have to be the Damascus encounter type. But supernatural encounters must be commonplace among, excuse me, the children of God. We are a spiritual people. Amen. Amen. We are spiritual people. And so this morning I want to talk to you about this looking at, you know, three main focus areas. Damascus encounter by interruption. Damascus encounter kaho cities, yes. So that's the first one, right? Damascus encounter by invitation. Damascus encounter kaho menwa. Is the second one. The third one is Damascus encounter. Damascus encounter. By demand. Kaho right. So Damascus encounter by interruption. By invitation. Kaho menwa. By demand. Le kaho bad. Right. And then I will also say one or two things about encounters that might not be Damascus. So they are not dramatic. And therefore, we might miss them. Right. Mm. Um, yeah, so, so that's what I'm hoping to, you know, to share with you this morning. So let's go to Acts chap chapter 9, uh, verse 1 to 6, uh, which is the, the main scripture reference that you are using uh, for this uh, series. And then Kitlo Ibala from the New Living Translation. And... Uh, Ibale Ajina. Iri verse one. Meanwhile. Iri kana kuteu. Any in any time. This word meanwhile is being used. Lentule na halisebedi swa kana kutedi. Kana kutozole halinzule na halisebedi swa. When this word is used every it, time. It connects and contrast two things. Yeah, so it tells you that something was happening. 
But now I'm moving on to telling you about something else. That is that was also happening. So it's about during this time. Other translation says, uh, but. Color that verse one with but. So it says, meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats and every bre- with every breath and was eager to, to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priests. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus. Asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way. Other translation says, any who belonged, any who were of the way. Uh, he, uh, uh, okay, let me reread. Ask, uh, let me reread it. Asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, the light from heaven, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Verse 5, who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one that you are persecuting. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Now, let's go back to that first word, meanwhile. So, what was happening? In the book of Acts, Luke, the physician, provides an account of the work of the disciples and the church after the immediate ascension of the Lord. In in this book, he writes to a Theophilus. And, and basically takes him through that era that began the church. So the book of Acts is, begins the era of the church. So in chapter 8, Luke had just told Theophilus of exploits of Stephen and Philip. Uh, uh, he was just telling Theophilus of what Philip and Stephen had, you know, had just done. If you look at the rest of the book, up to chapter, chapter 9, you, hear, you see a church that is effective. You see a church that is impactful. You see a church that has taken the mandate of being a witness of Jesus seriously. In verse 8 of chapter 1, the Bible says, but you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Jesus said, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You see, a witness is, is someone that, that, has, that has seen something take place. And is there to tell of all they saw and heard. 
what they have experienced. If you and I don't have personal encounters with God, what kind of God will we talk about? If we do not walk intimately with him, what kind of God will we share? It starts in our place of intimacy with him. One of my favorite verses, John chapter 1. Here, no one has seen God at any time except the begotten of God. Here, he is in the bosom of the Father. Right? But Kirataka, the Amplified, the Amplified then tells you, or, and then it says, he is in the bosom of the Father and he, he has declared him. But the Amplified breaks, us, breaks this declaration of God down into four things. Here he has revealed him. He has brought him out where he can be seen. He has interpreted him. And he has made him known. All from the place of intimacy. It's intimacy with God that gives us the, the ability to declare him accurately. If you and I don't spend time in his presence, if we do not get to know his ways, it is impossible for us to witness, to provide a witness, an accurate witness of who he is. Because we will be filled with head knowledge. We will know scriptures and verses to share with people. But we will not be able to share the character of God. We will not be able to put our God on display for others to see. And so, so, so this translation, uh, he, he revealed him. Because God wants to be revealed. He is not going to show up as himself. You see, if God were to show up as himself, everybody, every knee will bow. There is no other option. Every knee will bow, even if you don't want to. So, so God does not want to force anyone. And so now he wants to come through you and me. He wants to be mirrored through you and me. And so we see a church that took their mission seriously. Acts 4 verse 33 says, And with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of Jesus. With great power. My prayer is that with great power we'll give witness that Jesus did not only rise, but he ascended. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. But Zalona, God is restoring the glory of his house. And God is raising men and women, boys and girls, who will walk in the fullness of his glory. Amen. Amen. In fact, Muruti, when I was praying this week, praying about this service, I, I, I felt like the, uh, maybe this is what happened this morning. I felt like 
like the, a, a gushing of water from beneath us <laughs> coming up <laughs> like this. I didn't see it was a feeling. But I, I'm convinced that as God begins to restore the glory of his house, you'll once more, once more we will hear messages about holiness. Once more, We'll hear messages. Yeah, the, the children of God cannot live any way they wish. Once more, we'll hear those messages when God, through His Spirit, begins to align us. When He begins to judge His house. We will hear messages that will confront us, that will challenge us, that will not let us stay where we are, but invite us up so that we take our place as sons of God on earth. He who's got the spirit has heard. So the early church, Bazalan, was a powerful church. Acts 5 verse 13 says, as a result of their way of life and exploits, and what they are able to do, great fear came upon all. There, there is this particular phrasing that is sometimes used in the book of Acts, if you read it carefully, it says, and none dead then join them easily. Imagine that. None dead to join them easily. That was the church. And that's what God is going to restore. You see, we have a theology that says we should not fear God. I don't know about that theology. Reverential fear of God is key to walking with God. It's not fear about to run away from his presence. It, it's, it's, it's hallowing his presence. When, 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 when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he said, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And, and interestingly, he was talking about hallowing the name of Father. Right? Hallow this name. Hebrews Chapter 4, verse 1, talking about this thing of, of, of reverential fear, says, Therefore, while the promise of enter, entering his rest remains, let us fear, lest any of us come short of it. While the promise of entering his rest remains, yes. Let us fear, excuse me, lest any of us come short of it. Right. So, so this issue of hallowing God, this issue of reverential fear of God, is an important thing by you. And, and, and you will know that 
There is no fear in the presence of God. Here. Only love. Only acceptance. But are it anake lip fail up in the presence of we, God. We don't just mess around with it. The presence of God is, is something to be hallowed. But then Bamodimu can treat a meeting is honky, it's hard. Ntabu baby, uh, in, in, in Acts chapter 5. So it says, Great fear came upon them all. Um, and then. I'm just going to go to the portion I'm looking for in verse 12. It says, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. I know other translations do not translate it one accord. But I, 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 I wanted to emphasize here the importance of the unity of believers. Elsewhere in John 17, Morana, just so when he prays, he says, when he, Jesus prays, ore, he says to the Father, ore I pray that they may be as one. As you and I are. One of the things that the enemy fights most about is the unity of the believers. Because there lies our strength. You see, you see, my body is coordinated, right? So, right? Yes. And so the body of Christ is the same. If you are a hand, but you decide, or no, 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 no. I'm not going to do this thing of yours. And so it means that the hand cannot function. So the body suffers. Because there, there is a role that needs to be played by this hand, but, you know, there is division in the church. So. And so the chair, the, the hand, uh, you know, fights, you know, the, you know, the feet, and, and it's just a big mess. And so, as God restores the glory of his house, you will see one of the things that he's going to do is that he's going to help us understand who we are, what role we play in the body, and the importance of the body functioning together. Amen? Amen. That is important. And the body functions together under the leadership of the head. Bazalana, there's only one head. Call me generally. It's fine. But there's only one head. Jesus. Christ the righteous. He is the head of the church. It is him that all of us must be submitted. The second thing that I want to talk about, and I know uh, it might have been touched on, um, is this thing, you know, in, in, in the Bible talks about the people of the way. Right. These are not Sunday Christians. These are people of the way. Who follow in his ways. Who are submitted to the head of the church. You see, part of the challenge we have today is this thing called Christian is very broad, you know. Yeah, you can be a Christian and, you know, even if you don't believe the things that Jesus said, you know, you can still call yourself. 
But Jesus says, said, made this important statement. In John 14, verse 15. John 14, verse 15. He says, how can you love me but disobey my words? How, how can you say you love me, but casually you just you know, disobey me? You see, disobedience is not inconsequential. The first thing is that it, it hardens the heart. That's what disobedience does. That is why the Bible says, today when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So what happens is, there are particular areas of our lives where we generally disobey. And so, you know, we are hardened in that area of life. Yeah, in certain areas of our lives. No? And so those areas of life, they create a resistance towards the will of God. So when the enemy wants to compromise us, and he comes at opportune times, when God is about to do something, and so when he wants to stop the, the God from doing something with you and me, if, your, if your, the area of hardness of your heart is anger, you just find someone to just step on your toe. You know? And that thing is sugil. Right? And, and, and so, he does that with many other areas of our lives. And that's why you find us, if you look at us, we, we, we have a pattern of sin in our lives. We don't sin random. No, there are particular things. Because we are tempted when we are drawn away by our own lusts. Right? So there is something in us. So Jesus, when he deals with us, when he, 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 he speaks about this issue, um, going towards uh, Calvary, he says, the enemy is coming after me. But he will find nothing in me. He will not find something to grab hold of. To take me away from this thing that God wants me to accomplish. So part of what we need to do as believers is to be aware of the things that are in us and to take these things that are in us and to present them at his feet. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So we don't do it with condemnation. We do it proactively like David said. Search me and know me. And so when we do that, God begins to work and remove the seed of disobedience that is in our hearts. Right? Okay. So he continues then to work in us. And then he works in us to will and to do according to his good pleasure. But it's a process that starts when we believe in obeying the Lord. So, John. 
something else that is important that gets in the way of, let me put it this way, maturity cannot take place where there is disobedience. Okay. Only when we mature, we put the character of God on display. So without obedience, there can never be growth. Without growth, we will not attain maturity. So sometimes people ask me, Maruti, what is maturity? What does it mean for a believer? When we say a believer is maturing, what are we actually talking about? I, I don't know what your answer is to that question, but I have a very simple answer. In, area, in every area of our lives where we are becoming like Jesus, we are maturing in that area of life. The standard of maturity is well defined in Scripture. It is becoming like Jesus. You see, the gospel of going to heaven has done a lot of damage. Here is the essence of the gospel as I understand it from scripture. Uh, essence is what the gospel is. Romans 8.29. For those God foreknew, he predestined them. But sometimes we get stuck, you know, those that are evangelical with this predestination. Right? But let's read it in full. It says they are predestined to be conformed. Conformed to the image of his son. Exactly. So, so God has decided beforehand. That's what predestination is about. He predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. So, so, so that verse carries two ideas. Pattern, Pattern and standard. standard. Um, when a dressmaker, well, I should say fashion designer, okay. otherwise uh, <laughs> I reveal my age then. <laughs> when a fashion designer is about to make a dress, <laughs> they use a pattern. Right? Yeah. So, so you have to have a picture of what you want to produce <laughs> in the end. So, so this pattern <laughs> Decides where you want to cut, where you have to cut the cloth. It tells you how to cut the cloth. How much? That's the pattern. Jesus is the pattern. According to which we are being shaped. When after they have, you know, you know, made the dress. They now compare what they have produced against the pattern. Where there are mistakes, they go back and fix. Because this pattern is also the standard that you judge the quality of the work that is being done. This is the essence of the gospel saints, I believe. That God is working in us to produce a people in the likeness of his son. 
In fact, Apostle Paul understood this because he says it in, in Galatians 4 verse 19. He says, my little children whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in me. He says, I will keep working. I'm, I'm prepared to go through labor pains again and again and again until Jesus takes shape in you. Until Jesus crystallizes in you. Until Jesus is shaped, is formed in you and I. This, Barcelona, I believe, is the essence of the gospel. God said at the beginning, let us make men in our likeness and in our image. That is the plan that was disrupted. Jesus comes to restore that original plan. A people made in the image of God. Moruti, I apologize because it doesn't seem like I'm getting to the theme. All right, so I'm going to skip a couple of things and just honor you and, 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 and speak to the theme before, before my time is up. But I thought that was an important foundation. For what God wants to do. So, encounter by interruption. So, We are interrupted. When we are interrupted, we are not asked our permission. Right? This is when God dramatically interrupts your life without giving you a choice. And that encounter with him changes your life completely. Like it happened with, with Saul. But Moses is another one. At the burning bush, he had an encounter with God. Saul and Moses you know, had their lives interrupted at an opportune time to position them to carry out purposes of God. So, so think about God coming into time to interrupt you and me so that we are aware of what he wants to do through us. God does that. And, and Saul, uh, later Apostle Paul, is an example of this. Let, let me repeat something that I said earlier. Uh, but this time using the... If, Words from uh, John Wesley. He said, without God, man cannot. But without man, God will not. The Bible says, for we are God's, we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand so that we might walk therein. Allow God to interrupt you if he chooses to interrupt you. But the second way in which sometimes God works with us is, is what I call encounters by invitation. So this is happens when at the invitation of God himself. 
he requires us to come. Revelations 4, 1, verse 2, 1 and 2 is, is a good example of this. Then I, as I looked, I saw a, a door standing open in heaven and the same, uh, sorry, then I looked um, and I saw a, a standing open in heaven and the, and the same voice I heard before spoke to me like a trumpet blast. The voice said, come up here and I will show you what must happen after God has this come up here moment. This is when out of his providence, out of his sovereignty, wants to elevate our perspective, wants to position us in some way. And then he invites us so that we would see from another perspective. The, the one that I really want, wanted to spend a bit more time on are encounters by demand. It's, it's, it's like, no, we talk about on-demand TV, ne? Right. So it's 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 available when you want it. Right. So uh, Rona, we didn't grow up like that. Ditaba was a particular time, and if do miss it, they do miss it, right? Uh, but now you can catch them everywhere all the time. So so the encounters that you can have, that I can have. Because I have made a demand on God for them. Jeremiah 29 verse 12 and 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. You hear what it says. You will seek me. You will do it. God will not do it for you. You will seek me. And find me. Because I'm not in hiding. Right? Yes. But, but my presence is activated by this one thing. Someone who seeks him with all of his heart. That's the only requirement. God is not hiding. When you and I get to that place where we seek him with all of our hearts, suddenly he's there. Because he's not hiding. I had uh, someone say, God is not hiding, but he does not give up himself away cheaply. So he's not hiding, but he does not give himself away cheaply. Years ago, Tommy Tenny you know, wrote a book, God Chasers. You know, some of, I'm sure, you know, Baruti have read the book, uh, and, and believers. There, there's, a, there's a statement he made that he makes in the book that I never forgot. He says, the reason we are not hungry for God is because we are full. We are full of social media. We are full of television. Some of us are full of politics and sports. 
But the reason we are not hungry, we are not chasing after God is because we are full. He says, if, if, we, can, if we can slow down, switch the tap off, yes, yeah, social media, maybe we can position ourselves to be full. I apologize, I'm, I'm out of time, but I just want to say this last, make this last point. A couple of years ago, I was reading Habakkuk chapter 2. The verse we all know, write the vision down, make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Yes. All of that. And as I was reading it, it struck me that this verse can't just be about helping us to set up visions. And, and so I started reading and looking. And then I got to verse 14. Yeah, Habakkuk chapter 2. And then I thought, perhaps this is what this is about. Verse 14 says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters that covers the sea. Jesus in you the hope of glory. God wants to be seen, wants to be experienced. He wants the world to have encounters with him. But God works through us. And so Habakkuk chapter 2 says <coughs> there's a time that will come where the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters that covers the sea. In your neighborhood God wants to be experienced in your family, God wants to be seen. God wants to be experienced and encountered by people. But it starts with you and me. When we, if he doesn't interrupt us, if he doesn't invite us, we put a demand on encounters with God. Shall we pray? Father, we just want to honor you and thank you for your word. We thank you for the ministry of your spirit. No matter the gift of the speaker, the preacher, the teacher, it is your spirit that works in our hearts to convict, to change, to position us to change and and so we want to honor you this morning for the ministry of your spirit. And we bless you for the richness of God towards us. When the psalmist understood this, he cried with a loud voice and said, But who is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you would visit him? Father, we invite you to help us. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us, Holy Spirit. Position us, change us, work in us, continue to work in us to will and to do according to your good pleasure. We bless you this morning, even as your children are in this place, even as we gather together, we ask that you draw us up to the place of glory, even as you restore your church, the glory of your church in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Murut. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you sir.
sibili sule